All right, so you're probably wondering why I'm at the airport filming this video, if you looked at the title. And it's because I was already at the airport, and so I'm just gonna continue making video content here. So, this is kind of interesting. I'm not really a tech reviewer or anything like that, but I came across this device and I just knew I had to talk about it because I wasn't seeing many videos or reviews about it. So here is my quick run at doing a tech review. What I have with me is the Asus Creator Q laptop. Um, it actually goes by a couple names, it's kind of weird. So it has the same specs as the Creator Q, as well as the Asus VivoBook Pro 15 OLED. I don't know why they have two names for pretty much the same exact hardware. I think the only difference is the color of the keyboards. Um, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but that is what I have today. Because I'm not a reviewer, I'm gonna pull up the tech specs that I wrote down on my phone and the stuff that I wanna talk about. This wasn't really a planned video, so that's why I have quick notes here. Now, I found it a little difficult to find links to buy this actual laptop. Um, I'm not sure why, maybe it's just not being widely, uh, widely marketed or something like that. I'm, I have no idea why, but it was actually kind of difficult to find a place to buy this laptop. So you can buy it directly from Asus, um, and that will ship from California, from their actual manufacturer, or you can go to Best Buy and get it. Um, I had to order this online at Best Buy. And if you're trying to find this exact laptop, the model number is Q543, Quebec 543. There are other Asus Creator Q or Asus Aviva Book Pros that have similar specs, but they have actually an older graphics card in the RTX 3 series or um, even the 4050 series. Um, but on that note, let's talk about the actual hardware that is inside of this machine. So this laptop boasts the Windows 11 operating system, of course, because every new laptop that is Windows-based is shipping with Windows 11 instead of Windows 10. Make of that what you will. This laptop has an Intel Core Ultra 9 185H CPU, and it has a dedicated NPU or Neural Processing Unit chip, and that is used for AI. It comes with 24 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, or it can come with 16, but it is upgradable up to 24 gigs. It has an RTX 4060 laptop GPU, and that comes with eight gigabytes of DDR6 VRAM. In terms of storage, mine came with two terabytes of NVMe SSD. This supports Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. Now, the display, let's talk about that real quick. Now, being outside, it's gonna be hard to show you, unfortunately, I see now why they do reviews inside, but this boasts a 3K 15.6 inch OLED display that is at 120 hertz refresh rate. That's pretty sweet. And my research has told me that this is a 400 nit display on SDR or standard dynamic range, and then it goes up to 600 in HDR or high dynamic range. And this also has a 75 watt hour battery, which from my work has lasted me around seven to eight hours. So I've charged it once in the morning and I'm good for the rest of the day. I've even used it between multiple days if I'm doing light work. Now let's talk about the IO ports because that's where this laptop really shines. We'll start on this side here. You have your DC or direct current in, so that's how you power the laptop. You also have an RJ45 gigabit ethernet port right here. You have an HDMI 2.1 slot. Next up, you have a USB-A 3.2 slot. This is the Gen 1. You have a USB-C Thunderbolt, and this is Thunderbolt 4. And then you also have a, another USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 slot. And then you have a 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack. On the other side, you can see we have another USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 slot. And lastly, but one of my favorites, is this full-size SD 4.0 card reader slot. So as you might be able to tell from this hardware, it is built to be a workbook laptop, right? You have plenty of I.O. ports, which is one of my favorite reasons for choosing this laptop. And then it also boasts a lot of cool internal aspects, such as the dedicated GPU, the RTX 4060, and then also the NPU chip if you wanna do some fun little AI work there. So I'm gonna talk really quickly about some of the other aspects of this machine uh, that I find really cool. So up here, you can see that there is a camera. Actually, it's kind of hard for you to see, but there is a five megapixel camera at the top and it also has a nice little 
hardware shutter so you don't have to have the camera on you and you have that peace of mind that, oh, my shutter is closed. So you can see that as I flip over, that orange marker goes away. Now the display is really awesome. I do a lot of photo and video editing and that's one of the reasons that I wanted to buy this laptop. It is a Pantone color certified screen, which is really awesome. The colors are super vibrant and super accurate to many of the devices that I share content on, such as different mobile phones. Now the hardware down here is some of my favorite as well. This is a fully backlit keyboard with a dedicated number pad, which is disappearing from a lot of laptops these days. Now this keyboard is actually really nice. It has a 1.4 millimeter travel, which feels really responsive. It's nice and clicky. Obviously it's a membrane keyboard, it's not a mechanical, but it's been very nice typing on this keyboard. The trackpad is super responsive and very precise. So I'll even use the trackpad in something like Photoshop, which I don't do often. This also has a little Asus dial. It's kind of hard to see on here, but in the top left corner, there's a little dial pad that can be activated by swiping down here. And then as I swipe around, you can see the dial appear on the screen up here. Um, so you can customize that as you want for different programs. Uh, so I've messed around with it a little bit in DaVinci Resolve, which is a video editing software. And I've also messed around with it in Photoshop for changing like brush sizes, the density, um, but you can even just change the volume or the brightness of the display by default. Again, that dial is fully customizable, um, so that's kind of nice to have, but again, one of my favorite aspects, even though that dial is there, you can actually turn it off just by swiping from the side so it doesn't get in the way. One of the other cool things about this laptop is the audio. This is Harman Kardon, Harm, Harman Kardon, yeah. Harman Kardon Audio. So it has really nice bass to it. I actually had to turn down the bass a little, which for anyone that knows me, that's pretty weird for me to turn down the bass. But you can see that it has two speakers on the bottom down here, and it really does give you full sound. The laptop ships with Dolby Atmos software installed on it, so you can do all these different customizations to the EQs and sound effects that you want, so I'm really happy with that. Since we're looking at the bottom of the laptop, let's talk about the fans. This actually comes with two fans on it, so that's really nice. You have three vents, so you have the vents on the bottom, you also have vents along the back, and then along the side, you can see air vents there as well. So it does a lot for cooling. Now, that does mean that because it has the two fans, it can get a little bit loud at times, but it's not gonna sound like a gaming laptop and it's not gonna sound like you're taking off from a Kennedy Space Center or something like that, right? It's not a rocket ship like some of the Alienware's out there. It is a very nice sounding device. This is a really awesome device. It has a lot of specs that I care about, such as the CPU being an Ultra 9, uh, the dedicated GPU being an RTX 4060. That is super important for the type of creative work that I do, such as video editing, uh, some of my photo editing, and then of course I do software development on this as well. Now, I haven't actually messed around too much with the gaming one here, but from doing some research, I believe this will handle a lot of games at pretty good quality and high refresh rates. If you have questions on that, let me know and I can do another review on how gaming is on this laptop. But typically, I game on a dedicated uh, workstation that I built at home. So I've already talked a little bit about it, but what do I use this laptop for? I do use this for a lot of editing on the go. At home, I have a dedicated workstation, but when I'm on the go, my previous laptops weren't cutting it for me. So I needed a powerful workstation, but also in a small package. This is a 15 inch laptop and it fits perfectly in my backpack. This one is actually not too heavy. This is about 4.2 pounds, which is heavier than some of the other laptops that are on the market, some of the ultra thin ones. Um, but this has really nice build quality, right? So the actual top of it, you can see it does get fingerprints quite a bit, so you might want to clean it off if you really care about that. For me, it's fine, it's whatever. I'm not sure what this is exactly made of, but this is some type of metal top on here. I'm gonna guess it's like an aluminum or something similar. Inside of the laptop, it is plastic, so but it is a very nice material plastic. And again, the keyboard also feels really nice for that 1.5, 1.4 millimeter throw. Whatever I said before was the right number. Overall, I would recommend this laptop for any creators out there. I've actually fallen in love with using this thing. 
Um, I actually use it most of the time not plugged in, which is pretty awesome. Obviously, you'll get better performance when the laptop is plugged in, um, but I just haven't needed to. And I use this at airports, coffee shops, on the go, everywhere. Again, one of the other cool things about this laptop is it is upgradable. If you get a lower spec device, you can upgrade it. So there's three aspects. You have the RAM. So there is a soldered eight gigabyte stick of RAM in there, um, but you can upgrade the other SODIMM slot to um, uh, 16 gigs, which would give you a total of 24. This laptop already has 24 gigs. Additionally, there is another M.2 slot in here for your storage. So this laptop came with two terabytes of storage, but you can actually go up to four terabytes. So two terabytes on that other slot of storage. And lastly, I found this out. You can actually upgrade the Wi-Fi chip in here as well. So it supports Wi-Fi 6E from the factory, but you can upgrade to Wi-Fi 7 if you want to as well. I'll take a little benchmark of this laptop and throw it up to the screen here so you can check that out. Uh, see how the actual performance of this little device is. But thank you for watching. Thanks for coming to check out my little laptop review of this Asus Creator Q laptop or Asus VivoBook Pro 15. I, I don't know, whatever. If you like content like this, let me know. I'd be happy to review other little tech, but yeah, let me know. And if you enjoyed this content, like, subscribe, leave a comment. It really does help out the channel and it helps me to determine helps me to determine what type of content you like to see. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.